So, hello, I'm Carl Goebel. I'm uh, from the University of Manchester, from Elixir, and uh, from the Bioschemas project. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about Bioschemas. Um, this is joint work with a huge number of people across uh, the Elixir program and related projects. And I've just highlighted in green uh, the leadership at the moment. Um, so, your fair uh, bingo, whoever's still doing bingo, uh, is compulsory with the law to say uh, a fair, findable, accessible, will reusable course. I'm on the fair paper and so are you. Yay, anybody else on the fair paper? Woo, yeah, there we are, we rock. Anyway, um, catalogs, um, aggregators and search is what we're interested in, bioschemas, and that's the findability part. So not the rest of it, not, it, not reusability, not interoperability, not accessibility, just finding stuff. So that's what we wanted to be able to look at in bioschemas. The intuition was, there is structured data markup for web pages because it turns out search engines are quite good at finding shit. So why don't we think about the way that they find things? So uh, schema.org is, is an activity uh, developed by a bunch of search engines in order to be able to create structured, uh, simple structured metadata markup in web pages and sitemaps to help harvesting and search and summary snippet making. And that's just it. Harvesting, search, and summary snippet, snippet making. And so, and search engines um, often highlight websites that are containing schema.org in preference to others. It's got widespread commercial and open source infrastructure, and there's a low barrier to adoption for it. So you can take uh, something like uh, recipes, you're searching for recipes, you can mark up potato salad in your, uh, with um, structured markup with um, JSON or uh, uh, RDFA or microdata or any old fashioned thing that you came across and this will be found and used to, to build uh, search links. So why don't we instead, instead of potato salad, why don't we do protein annotation instead? So this was the intuition behind bioschemas. So let's take something like a Uniprot entry and all the Uniprot entries and mark them up with a small amount of very limited number of concepts in order to be able to better find them and better be able to snippet them. So that's what we're doing. Um, so it's a community built on top of schema.org. So what we're doing is taking schema.org and doing as little as possible that we can in order to be able to adapt it to biology. Uh, to incorporate major data sets where, frankly, you know, you don't, everybody knows where Uniprod is, but, uh, but we, uh, instead, there, their problem is standardised metadata and feeding our registries, the life science community registries and aggregators, with good quality metadata. Smaller data sets, um, there they want to be able to have rapid markup, uh, be exposed to harvesting and be exposed to finding. And there's a large number of these long tail data sets that would be better um, exposed if we could do better metadata markup. And we could use our community commodity off the shelf tools and build an application ecosystem. So we would take major data repositories, uh, smaller data repositories, and we've also piloted this with training uh, resources um, in order to be able to service search engines, registries, and other data aggregators for the better good. So it's a community initiative. So we've onboarded significant number of uh, data providers into this game. So Interpro and all of its related data sets, Biosamples, Uniprot, uh, the European Genome Phenome Archive, uh, and some of the smaller ones, for example, Brenda, CAS, all of these are being talked about in the other sessions. These are all on board the project and they're all part of the pilot and also human beacons. EBI Search and Google are also on board the project and fair sharing are leading um, aspects of it as well as um, other um, uh, registries such as identifiers.org, omixdi and so on and including the uh, training portal that we heard about earlier uh, in the morning, the TES from Elixir that all uses this idea. So the idea is that we have specifications that target bio uh, data infrastructure, so describing repositories and data sets, what's the minimum metadata you need for that, um, bio data types, so describing human beacons, samples, plant phenotypes and proteins, and bio stuff, 
training materials, events, laboratory protocols, workflows. Um, we got everybody on boarded, uh, notably people from Emble EBI, and uh, we're also developing with that, uh, alongside that a specialist validators, because obviously we're doing some, some specialist work. And we've already identified this new concept for schemas.org called bi biological entity. So um, already been beautifully introduced by, uh, by uh, Philippe about uh, searching for data, uh, reposit uh, data through data repositories and data set descriptions. And so we're leveraging all the work that he just mentioned. So thank you very much for that, Philippe. Um, and so this is joint work with NIH and, and Elixir projects in order to be able to help with um, structured metadata for registering data sets. We're slightly um, extending and adapting schema.org by adding some restrictions, so minimum information that we would want to have around certain uh, data types, constraints such as cardinalities, control vocabularies, and some new properties such as things like biological entity. This is um, who we are. Um, we are sponsored primarily by Elixir with strong support by Google and the NIH Big Data to Knowledge Program and additional contributors. Our specs, our first specs are out. We have an adopters meeting um, in October. Please come, particularly if you have a data set and you would like to figure out how to use it. And we have posters. Thank you very much. Thank you.